Hello, this video is a continuation of a video describing the object properties and the simulation of Copelia Sim or BREP. And in this video, I will show you actually how to change or where to locate these properties and how to modify them. Okay, so first let's uh, study what, what we have uh, here, what I have prepared for you here. Uh, we have a, a scene with eight objects, uh, they have different dynamic properties, we will see them. And you can see that one of them is on top of the other one. We can see easily that if we change the view here, and you can see that in this top view, we can see that the colored objects are on top of the, the, uh, the gray ones. Okay, so if we return to this view, okay, so uh, as you can see in our, uh, in our example, we have different uh, objects here in the scene and we can first change the name of the objects by modifying them. For instance, if we double click on the text of the object and we modify that, then we modify the name of the, the object. This is important, particularly when we will uh, start uh, using the, the coding or the scripting part of the software. Okay? And also, each of the objects has always an icon here. We will see that uh, on a different video. Uh, the, the icon type, but if we double click here on this icon, what we can see is the send object properties. It's a, it's a dialog in which we can modify the properties of the selected object. So right now we have this object selected and as you can see here we have two different uh, tabs, one related with the shape and the other one related with the common properties. Let's start with the common properties first, so if we go here, we have a set of properties here that we can select and uh, modify. The first ones are related with the camera visibility layers. As I explained before, the software allows to select individually on each object where you want to uh, be visible. And by default, if you access to this uh, dialog here right on the left side, you will see the visibility layers that are actually active here. By default, the first eight layers are active. So indeed, all these objects have the first layer, as you can see here, this is the first layer, the second one, and this is the eighth one, this is the ninth one, and so on. Okay, so all layers here that are active, if this is active and this is active, then the object, object will be visible. So if actually if this activate that one, the object is not visible anymore, okay? Indeed, we don't see it here, okay? And it gets the gray color here, but so it's still on the scene, but we can see it. So if we want to uh, see the object again, we have to activate that. And if we deactivate this global uh, uh, check, then all layers uh, that have this uh, this uh, layer active will be uh, hidden. So, as you can see, all of them are hidden, okay? And what we can do, for instance, is if we select or we active the second layer for this object and we deactivate the first global layer, only this object is active, okay? So, as I said, by default, uh, this is the, the standard behavior to, uh, to see, let's say, the NAS objects and we can invert and see what's behind the simulation and uh, usually here we will select the object, we will uh, view the objects that are affecting usually to the dynamic simulation. Okay, so uh, this uh, corresponds to the visibility layers and also here we have in the common uh, tag, we have uh, the special properties of an object, particularly we have the collidable, the measurable, detectable, and renderable. These objects uh, can be set individually for each object, so we can uh, set them, or we should sh set them only if we are going to use the object for that purpose. For instance, if we want, imagine that this object is a wall or something, we want to be uh, the object detected by a proximity sensor, then we should check this property of this object. And also if we want uh, that object to be considered as part of the uh, motion planning algorithms to, to generate a collision-free path, then we should activate that 
property. And if we want to see this object uh, with a vision sensor, then we should, should uh, activate this property here too, ok? So, I'm just simply undoing the changes. Ok, so now let's move to the shape uh, properties. First thing is here we can modify the color of an object by modifying the ambient component. So we can, as you can see, we can modify the color of an object. Ok, so let's go back. And also let's say I select this object here and now I want to modify it or add an, a texture. So we can uh, load an existing texture. Here this is a garage concrete texture. So, if I modify it, it should appear uh, in here. Uh, there must be an option in which is static te texture. Ah, here it is. Uh, it, it's modified, ok? So, this affects to the appearance, but the most important properties we can uh, select is the uh, when we enter in this uh, dynamic properties dialog. So, if we click here, then we have this dialog here, which is very important for us to control how the simulation works. So, as I said before, uh, objects in, in, the, in this simulator could be respondable or could be dynamic, or could be non-respondable or static. So, this depends if we select these options here, will be respondable or non-respondable, dynamic or static, in this case, ok? In the case of being dynamic, then this object will have additional properties like the mass, the inertial, the, the, the moment, the mass and so on, ok? So, these things we will uh, see them later in, uh, for advanced uh, features. Ok, so let's see exactly uh, in this scene that I have prepared here for you what we have. So, let's start with this object. This is a non-respondable and static object, so this means that it won't move. And this is also non-respondable static object, so they won't move at all. Ok? This one here is respondable, means that if someone collides, it will generate a reaction force, but only if the other object is also respondable. But it's static, so it won't move too, either. So, uh, also this one is respondable and it's static, so it won't move. And this one here is dynamic, so it will fall down because it will be affected by the gravity, but it's non-respondable, which means that even though this object here below is respondable, even though this object is respondable, when both of them collide, the green object will pass through the grey one and indeed will fall down to the minus infinity, ok? And these two objects here, this one is respondable and dynamic, this one is respondable and dynamic, and they will, uh, the, the red one will fall on top of the, the other one. Ok, so let's run the simulation here to see how it works. Let's just first move this thing here. And as you can see, these two objects are static, so they haven't moved. This one has fallen down, but because it's reactive, it's respondable, they collide with each other, so they stay there. But the green object has disappeared. Let's do it again and slightly slowly, so you can see it. Ok? So the green object passes through the other one. Indeed, this object here right now it's respondable and, in, uh, and it's static, but if we modify this and we set that to non-respondable, what happens is that this object is affected by gravity, but because it's non-respondable, what it will happen is that the floor is also a reactive object, so it won't react against the floor, so this object will fall down too. As you can see, both objects have fall down. Ok, so this is a, a brief summary about the object properties in VREP or Copenhagen. Thank you very much.